Hey everyone, Chris Reeves with Triarch Systems and I have Jimmy Rodriguez here with me and today we're going to do a little Q&A. So this is direct, kind of like uh, some questions we have took from the rail video that we released what, several weeks ago? Yeah, a couple Around weeks ago. Yeah, a couple yeah. weeks ago. And he's not showing me the questions so he's going to kind of hit me with them so we can just be a little bit more in depth with the uh, rail program that we're doing and when it's coming out. Awesome. Cool. All right, so let's hit me with it. Are right, you ready? Yes. Cool. We've got a few. So a lot of these were repeats, so we had a lot of the same questions coming in. So I think okay. a lot of people have the same like interest or curiosity. Okay. Uh, so we're going to start off. Will it be the same thickness as the previous rail? Uh, slightly slimmer, right? So I guess you could just say it's not too thin, but uh, I guess you could just call it a slim thick. Now, is that that's that's slim thick. Yeah. Now is that the overall profile of the rail, or is that the actual walls of the rail? The, both, right? So the overall profile and the inner diameter are going to be very similar to the existing rail. We didn't want that to change uh, too much. But um, the material is stronger, so we did make it a little thin. Yeah, so that leads to the next question. What material are you guys using to make it? Uh, we're using uh, 7075. Yes. Aluminum. Only, only the best. Yeah. Only the best. Spe the specify finest. aluminum. The finest, yes. <laughs> specify aluminum. Uh, so does this mean that you're ending your relationship with Zev Mega? Oh, absolutely not. Absolutely not. We're still continuing to do... We have more projects in the works. And, um, uh, I mean, very awesome projects. We're still continuing with the OZ9. We're still going to be using them as an OEM manufacturer. But... Mm -hmm. uh, this is more in the sense of as far as capacity and also too for us to uh, have complete control with the majority of the parts that we do um, uh, use. So having the handguard is was something also too during the supply chain with extrusions being short. Uh, everybody knows the whole process of making a rail. Most manufacturers will use an extrusion. You have to create a die. Die takes time to create. Then you get extrusions and then the machine time. So with this uh, program that we started, or the, the project that we started, we wanted to ensure that we had um, almost all control of manufacturing the, uh, our, our own handguard. So that's why we went with it. Um, but the relationship is still strong with Zev, and we still have a new project uh, coming here uh, next year. So it's going to be pretty awesome. Awesome. Uh, can we get details on the new attachment or the barrel nut? Yes. So as far as the materials, we really, went, we really wanted um, quality materials when we're using the components to put the lock up. So we're using, it's a, it's a clamping system and we can go more in detail in the next video, but uh, just, it's a it's more of a fitted clamp system with a, a footprint machine into the rail. And we are using a stainless steel barrel nut. Also uh, stainless, the clamps are stainless steel also. So we, like I said, we just want this thing to be strong, high quality. And the uh, bolts we're gonna be using is gonna be a, you know, graded steel bolts. So really, I mean, High quality parts. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so to speak. Yeah, we're not trying to go cheap on this in that in that sense. We're uh, trying to get our we're not trying to nickel and dime get our parts cost so low and, and uh, you know we're, we're not going that route. Okay. We just want to make sure that it it's quality, it lasts, and uh, it's built as strong as we build our rifles. Awesome. Uh, Built-in QD sockets. If yeah. so, where? Front and back. So uh, forward of the, the barrel nut. So if you look at the, when you do look at the rail, it would be. The first steel QD socket will be forward of the barrel nut and then also towards the end of the rail. Okay. And that's just going back and forth. We just went ahead and added the, the second set of uh, steel, Q, steel QD nuts in the front of the rail because, I mean, everybody has their preferences and we kind of want to capture that. So either forward or back to the, back closer to the uh, rear here is what it's uh, basically offering. Gotcha. So how does the pricing compare of the new rail to the like wedge lock or other things that are on the market? Yeah, I mean, it's going to be, we're, we're going to keep in that same price range as we currently keep in the trial rail. That's, but like I said, there's other factors that can come into play, but we're not, it's not going to be anything drastic. We want to make sure that we maintain our numbers so we can obviously keep, continue what we're doing now, but we don't want to, at the same time, uh, make this thing so expensive to where it's going to put it out of uh, everybody's price range. So it's going to be relatively close to what we have it at. Mm -hmm. We're just waiting on those final details once we go into uh, full-scale production. Gotcha. So how does it compare to the Trilock, and more specifically, how does it compare to the weight of the Trilock? Uh, it will be about four to five ounces lighter than the Trilock. So we're able to kind of dissect a little bit what we've currently been doing and mix, re, uh, drop a little bit of weight here and there. And it makes a difference. You could tell, the, obviously when you pick the two rifles up, you could tell uh, there is a slightly bit of a, a weight difference. Um, as far as the, the strength, I mean, it's, it's solid. It's extremely solid. The way the design we are going for is obviously the wedge is it's very efficient in, in what it does when it just kind of you know wedge obviously wedges the the rail onto the barrel nut. But what we really wanted to capture is the sense of we wanted to distribute equal amount of pressure throughout the barrel nut. Mm -hmm. That was the goal. So when we 
the brown light, you don't have to time it. So we just, as soon as we uh, slide the rail on there, we just want to make sure that we have equal amount of pressure throughout the whole brown light. That was kind of the goal for us. Uh, what we found out too is by doing that, it, it's very hard to rotate or, you know, as far as like putting torque onto the uh, rail to get it to rotate. Now we'll, it will have an indexing uh, pin like the, uh, the current wedge lock does, but we wanted to ensure that, except once you have that even amount of pressure and you buy a rail, you don't have that hole for the indexing pin, well, the anti-rotation tabs are not gonna be a thing because mm -hmm. it's on there so, uh, uh, it's on there really um, well, tight. Gotcha. Uh, how does the black anno compare? Does it match, will it match the receivers? So we're doing, we're doing a best right now. We're working with a, uh, a couple different anodizers right now and trying to match it. It will be relatively close, but that's the thing about anodizing. Even what we currently have now, it's, they're still slightly off. It's all done in batches when people don't realize that it's close, but when you get up close, there's always some slight differences. You can notice it between uppers, lowers, and rails too. Sure. And you can sit there and you can go chasing. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can chase it, chase it, but for the most part, uh, when we do small batches, to make sure that we ensure the, you know, the proper amount of coating. But uh, we're keeping an eye on it. I mean, right now the samples that we've gotten look great and we're gonna, we've already moved forward with the first batch to uh, get anodes. So when they come back, they're gonna look really nice. Awesome. So what kind of testing has it been through? Oh man, <laughs> some, uh, some pretty mean stuff. Well, and so here's the thing with testing. Obviously you can do the, some pretty basic stuff, okay. Um, First thing they pull, you know, pull off machine, run it over. Okay, is it gonna collapse? No, it didn't. That's just kind of like the basic stuff. But the most interesting thing we want to do is thermal cycling, right? Getting the getting the, the gun, the whole gun itself, extremely high temperatures by achieving that by, you know, you could multiple ways, high round counts or just dumping rounds out, you know, full auto round, <laughs> full auto mag dumps with the suppressor, which sounds pretty fun, but it's not really fun by the time you get, it to, this, hot to, to get to the six or seven mag and it gets really hot. But recording the temperatures, recording the cool down period, um, going back, check, taking, um, testing out your torque, or checking, rechecking your torque. And that's very important. You don't want the, the bolts to lose torque. Just like with any type of rail too, you don't want it to lose torque as it goes hot and cold, hot and cold, hot and cold. So thermal cycling was very important to us. Um, also to drop testing, things like that, where we wanted to make sure we dropped the, un and that's kind of like unreal ex expectations. When we're throwing on the concrete, things like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, stuff can happen, you know, as far as a sling breaking or you drop your gun, yeah. but unrealistic stuff where we're like, you know, toss it in the air and, and other stuff breaks on the gun before the, even the rail does. So sure. uh, th now those are pretty basic. Now. The thermal cycling was very important. Anti, uh, obviously, uh, testing torque, uh, trying to turn, spin the rail was mm -hmm. a big one too. And so when you go into that, where you're torquing bolts to a certain inch pounds, and then also torquing, putting torque onto the rail yeah. at certain foot pounds to see, obviously, where's, where's the, where's the sweet spot, and where's the give? Uh, because, I mean, some rails, you put, you put them to peg, uh, you, you know, install them to specifications, and you put torque onto them, they, they will spin. Yeah. Surprisingly, you will find out how easily they will turn. And you can have anti-rotation tabs all you want, but one thing about anti-rotation tabs, if you look at it and how thin the material is, like think about it. When the material is so thin on anti-rotation tab, it's going to just give. Now, like I said, sometimes it's, like I said, some of the stuff's unrealistic, unrealistic, uh, unrealistic expectations, but we do want to see how strong it is. Sure. Right? We do want to see how much torque it does to, to turn the rail. Uh, so to speak. So we've done the testing and then also just kind of getting around there on demo guns, getting rounds through them, make sure there's no shift, uh, dissipates heat really well too. That's one thing too, recording the heat as far as like how long it takes to cool down, heat up so you can, you know, how many mags will it go through before it gets, you know, a certain temperature too hot to hold mm -hmm. and then when it cools down. This All the seal testing we've done now, right now they're all currently, you know, spread out uh, in different parts of the country. And also we have some uh, LE units picking it up too that we're currently uh, uh, putting on their orders. So we're gonna be collecting that data, right? So mm -hmm. now they go out in the wild because we can run them all day in every different scenario, but it's when you get these into different environments and who knows what people do to these things. Yeah. <laughs> and, but we want to ensure that we, you can only cover, you can think you're gonna cover every single base in your head. You can go through any step of scenario, any situation, but sometimes it's not the case. Weird stuff happens out there. Yeah but we're, we're ensuring that we get a wide variety to cover all our bases. Awesome. So will you make a quad rail? Hold on, let me, let me, let me, uh, let me look at our, our minder over there in the background. 
Allegedly. Allegedly. Implied. R- rumor has it. It's an implied implied, implied quad reel. It'll probably be like two because I want one. And <laughs> I know somebody else that wants one. That's about it. <laughs> well, I, there's three of us in this room and I want okay. one. So. Well then, that's three quad rails. <laughs> Spin up another pro, a project. Uh, this one came specifically from Chad. So Chad right. asked, will duct tape stick to it so that he can mount his laser? Oh, well, since the high quality lasers he buys, of sure. course it will. Yeah. You can duct tape all that stuff you want because... <laughs> Chad buys nothing but the best. Nothing but the best Amazon, for Chad. Right? <laughs> off Amazon, yeah. Well. Uh, and those, those uh, blacklisted sites. So, <laughs> uh, Can you run over it with a car? Yes. Yes. Yes, they did that. Like I said, it's not scientific or nothing, but it's it was just more it's been of like, a car. So. hey, let's go, uh, let's go see what happens. Right. Albeit it was a I'll, small car, it still worked though. I'll be, you know, it was, like, it was more of a motorcycle. Not <laughs> <laughs> it's a Hot Wheels. <laughs> no, but... Uh, like I said, that's not like scientific. It's just like, what can you do? Uh, these next three, we got a lot of. These were probably the majority of our questions. Okay. So we'll start with the first one. When will it be out? We are looking at the end of this year for it to be out. Okay, there's some, some things that we've already noticed that we want to make changes. And mainly it's aesthetics, honestly, is what we want to do uh, for some of the changes. But for the most part, we're shooting at the end of this year. Well, let's just say... When I think end of this year, I'm relatively thinking obviously January, around that shot show time where typically people will do release stuff. It just happens to fall that way because mm-hmm. how the project, um, you know, the pace of the project sure. uh, that we are doing. But yes, it, it will be releasing soon. And, and keep in mind, this is, and I'm going to reiterate that whole thing where it was a big learning lesson for us as we were growing and we hit the um, obviously material issues last year, supply chain. Even labor was a thing. Well, that's one of those things where we had to reevaluate and realize that we have to make sure that we have um, backups, right? Secondaries to where we can run efficiently, even if we do have um, so short as that we did before. Mm-hmm. Like I said, it's big, and I'm sure a lot of companies had their learning lessons too, but that was big for us too. In, in the, the common thing that we had, which basically held a lot of the back orders, was the handguard. Yeah. And they're not easy to make. So, yeah. yeah. And, and along with that, the small parts that go with it, you know, yep. the, the wedges, so. Yeah, you can, if you, you can have a whole batch of screws mm-hmm. just get messed up if someone doesn't heat them, uh, heat treat them right, so that can happen too. Yeah. So there's a lot of factors that happen. Yeah. Uh, so will they be available for individual sale? Of course. Yes, of course they will. Individual sale, you don't have to buy one of our um, uppers or rifles to get it. Individual sale, yes, it'll be available. Yeah. Are current orders eligible to get them? Current orders, yes. They are eligible to get them. Uh, now we do have a, a fairly large number of uh, production prototypes, so uh, some individuals uh, we we're going to allow to be part of that process. If people want to, hey, be in the process to get one of the first ones, that's fine. We're going to do it. Uh, some of those older orders, by all means, easy day, right? Some LE agencies are going to be part of that too, which is going to be great. But uh, yeah, some people get a chance to just be part of this whole pro- uh, this whole project that's been. Gosh, take a lot of time. Take yeah. a lot of my time. <laughs> so, so how does what does that look like for somebody who has an order? They're sitting mm-hmm. on you know six yeah. month back order or whatever, what, however long yeah. it is. We're gonna open up. Uh, we're gonna send out a group emails. I mean, typically that's what we do to uh, update the customers who've been on back order. So, we're gonna send up an email that will be a certain available, certain uh, so many available for that switch. So we're gonna hey, loud if you want it, cool. If you want it, and uh, yeah, roll with it. Yeah. Now, as a part of that, so they'll get the sort of T&E rail kind of where it's yep. at in production. Mm-hmm. And then if we make any changes to it, if we get their feedback and, you know, there's an overwhelming majority says, hey, we want this one thing changed. And then it changes. Will they get an opportunity for that new rail? Well, so we, we talked about that and how we move into production when we said about slight changes. We're going to ensure that if we're ensure that with the new um, way we make this rail that we're, there's going to be a little bit of room for changes, right? We want it so we can, we can do all the testing we want. We get out there. When it gets out there and it, when it, time goes on, if we need to add something or take away, we're gonna ensure that we have enough room to do that. Um, mm-hmm. Individual, like it's a case by case basis. I mean, some people, it might just be in aesthetics. Well, we're not gonna make changes just for that because everybody's sure. opinion is different. But something functional where it can, can cause a problem, of course we're gonna change it, yeah. absolutely. And then so those who get to test it, will they get the, the second rail as well? Yes, if they wanna switch back or, or want the one, that's not a problem. It's just like, a, it's gonna be like a swap type deal, so yeah. Cool. So they'll have an opportunity to be a part of the T&E process. Yes. Yes. Nice. And I'm looking forward to it, too, because, yeah, I've, yeah. Been, I've been having fun shooting these. Everything mounts up. Everything's solid. Uh, couldn't ask anything better. And, and, and the, the great thing is that it's, it's a, of our own design. Mm-hmm. We, we sit here and put our heads together and 
and they came up with this design, and it's, it's working extremely well. Yeah. Extremely well. Yeah. Well, it's funny you say that, because I got my rifle here. Oh, yeah. And uh, hmm. we, could, we could throw a new rail on there. Uh, we'll, send you, we'll, send, we'll send you the form. <laughs> it's got to fill out the form. Yeah. Uh, but that's all the questions that, uh, that we got in. I think yeah. if there's more, if people have more questions about the rail or about yeah. production or things like that, I mean, don't ask where your order is, because we can't. Just go by your YouTube account yeah. and tell you that. Uh, but if you have questions about production, um, or even the process of yeah. making the rail, questions on more questions about it, we are going to be releasing uh, just more video and more uh, product testing that uh, some of our uh, team members are doing as far as individual shooters. So stay tuned for all that coming uh, down the road. But uh, we want to uh, want sure. Uh, this thing goes out smoothly because uh, I'm excited about it. Yeah, really. oh, for sure. A lot, of, a lot of time and energy is going into this. It's been cool to see it become what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and bring yeah, people yeah, yeah. along, let them see behind the curtain of yeah. what's going on. That's a whole process to, to, to get into a project like this and just make your own handguard. Mm -hmm. Some, it, especially if you're coming from your own design, mm -hmm. right? Now, some other people, it could just be quick if you go mentally, because I know a lot of people just tend to use something to wear bolts in the bottom. Hey, that's great. If that's what you're looking for, that's it. But we wanted to take a different route because we want it to be something that comes from uh, experience, something that comes from a lot of data that we've collected or what we've seen out in the field for you know, many years. Sure. Because um, we, we've used a few different rails. Yes, we used yeah. different rails in the past. Yeah. I mean, we started off with like the, the guys, the Mark. I think the Mark IV. Mark IVs and Mark yeah, 8s the Mark IVs and Mark VIIs, yeah. Then, then it changed to the... I mean, we even had some Knights rails. Yeah, and A couple yeah. of one-off nice guns. Rails, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. That was a... Uh, and then, obviously, transition over the wedge, but... Uh, yeah. yeah, learned a lot along the way. So one thing we just don't know is, uh, you know, we got to do the big name reveal here. Yeah. Soon. Well, but we'll be ready for that here shortly. That thick boy. Slim <laughs> thick. Slim thick. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Really quick before we close out, I do want to give a quick plug because we've been hinting at this in videos and letting people see it. Yeah. But one question that we've been getting a lot about is the new camo patterns. Oh yeah. So yeah. I want to give a quick shout out to Trix and Cerakote. I yeah. will link them down below yeah. in the video yeah. uh, or in the description, so that way you guys go follow. Because while Chris and the team have been working on this new rail, mm -hmm. the other Chris in yeah. the back has been working on new camo patterns and designs, color combos, yeah. and some really cool stuff coming out. Yeah, that, we keep busy. It's now open to the public, right? So they can. See yes, it's, it's open to the public, and we. We'll, I mean, we should do a video with Chris as far as uh, describing the camo patterns. But that's one thing is like, I mean, he loves doing it. He loves the challenge, and he likes doing it. He he'll knock he knocks out his orders for the day, and this dude just stays here on his own time just to uh, essentially figure out new things, try different things, different blending techniques, mm -hmm. different stencils, and everything else like that. What colors work best in contrast and different camouflages. So yeah. he's been killing it. Yeah. He's been no. killing it. We haven't done a lot of release, but we have something coming. We, you know, we do have a lot of release into the new camos here coming yeah. soon, too. Yeah. So go if you're not already, go to Instagram, go follow Tracks some Cerakote. Again, yeah. link will be in the description. To close out, just want to say thank you to everybody who supports the company, supports the brand. Uh, thank you for all those uh, who've been patiently waiting and continue to do so. We really appreciate your support. And uh, thanks for also, thank you for uh, Jimmy here for showing up and asking me these questions. It was his idea, he monitors the questions and he said, hey, a lot of people have questions. This is the best way to, to, get, to get answers to those questions uh, out in the open. And uh, obviously we'll probably just make some more changes and do some more videos here shortly as, as this video goes on. Yeah. And we'll get that release coming out soon. Six feet. This is not COVID regulations. We've all been, we've all had tested negative. Allegedly. Although I did lose my uh, taste yesterday. Mm. It came right. back though, so we're good. We're what good. happened? Yeah. I lost my taste when I ate, was eating Hot Pockets. I turned out that I burned my tongue. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't look at these. I need, oh, I need sure. the, <laughs> the taking test you can't see. All right, cool. Should we do a clap? Don't gotta do no, don't, get, don't do a good clap. It's all, all in there. Yeah. Modern technology. It's crazy. Clap. We've stepped yeah, up. Caught me. Set me in the right mindset. Yeah. So the switch goes off. <laughs> <laughs>